Today, I am going to review the movie. The Gray Man The Gray Man appeared to be the best person for the job. The film is directed by Joe and Anthony Russo, who previously worked on the previous two Avengers films, and is based on the first of a series of best-selling novels by Mark Greeny, Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, and Anna de Armas play the main characters, and it has a £170 million budget, which is apparently the most ever for a Netflix movie. It has all the advantages. This Netflix offering is the action thriller equivalent of a thoughtfully microwaved Tuscan sausage pen from M&S. It provides four good hours of worthwhile TV. In this Joe and Anthony Russo directed movie, Ryan Gosling plays a CIA assassin who is rescued from prison by a top secret black ops organization. He is a member of the Sierra Six, a gang of gray men that operate in the shadows. The evidence points to a data chip concealed inside a medallion discovered on the body of one of Sierra's victims when he discovers that his own bosses are up to no good. This Mac Guffin is quite succinct, and its precise significance is never adequately described. The agency cruelly sends Lloyd Hansen, a sadistic freak who delights in torturing people, played by Chris Evans, in order to silence him. Hansen has a frightening mustache and wears knitwear. Ana de Armas does a fantastic job portraying Danny. Ryan's agent, Wingwoman, who kicks just as hard as Ryan. Billy Bob Thornton plays Sierra's former boss Fitzroy. A decent man who once asked Sierra to watch over his young niece Claire. Who is played by 13-year-old Julia Butters in a bland and uncharacteristically cutesy role. Regia Jean Page plays the shady CIA commander. Fitzroy cares for Sierra with a fatherly compassion. She has undergone a full transformation since her spectacular performance as the talented young performer in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, who compliments Leonardo DiCaprio's unsuccessful cowboy star and makes him cry with joy. The main issue is that when a new franchise is presented, it helps if it truly feels new. It's not the gray man. It's not just that the main character, Sierra Six, or Six for short, admits that the codename Seven was already taken, and that the brassy score always seems to be building up to the classic riffs from the James Bond theme and the mission. Impossible theme. The most overused element is that Six is eluding the very people who trained him, to give the impression that their plot is complicated. The Russos frequently break the narrative with flashbacks, cuts to other characters, and captions stating that we are in Bangkok. Monaco, London, Vienna, or Berlin. However, the problem is tediously simple. Can a clandestine agent's employers deal with him before he deals with them? One problem is that the Bourne Identity, which came out 20 years ago, handled this better. The Gray Man draws heavily from that movie, including its sleazy, jargon-filled CIA briefings and its attractive sidekick. Another. More significant issue is that the Bourne Identity inspired a number of sequels and imitators with the similar Agent vs. Own Handler's plot, including Salt with Angelina Jolie, Safe House with Ryan Reynolds, Hannah with Saoirse Ronan, Red with Bruce Willis, and Night and Day with Tom Cruise. In Quantum of Solace, James Bond, played by Daniel Craig, joined in on the fun. All of the other guests have left the celebration because the Grey Man arrived so late. The Russo's film only differs from its predecessors by being far sillier. Six learns some shocking truth about Fitzroy's cocky young replacement Carmichael. After spending many happy years serving as a CIA hitman for his beloved employer and father figure Fitzroy. Yes. A USB stick. Not exactly cutting edge. Is it? The one-dimensionally evil Carmichael employs a contractor named Lloyd to steal the device and murder Six. Lloyd then hires every assassination squad in his little black book. He has an endless supply of resources. And sure, wherever Six may be in the globe, the assassins have the extraordinary capacity to find him. Additionally, they could all pass customs with trucks full of powerful armament. And in fact, these so-called elite death teams and secret societies are capable of firing rockets at one another in broad daylight without drawing attention to themselves. If you appreciate seeing fake-looking explosions of cars, planes, and skyscrapers, the Grey Man will keep you entertained. It's safe to assume that humorously excessive mayhem has replaced Greeny's original vision of Six as a mysterious figure who can disappear into the shadows unnoticed by anyone. But after seeing so many renowned landmarks demolished and innocent people killed, you start to question whether it's all worth it. Do not forget that Six is not attempting to preserve civilization as we know it. 
He only desires to jail one CIA spy. Because there was a $1 billion oil deal at stake in Greeny's novel but there is no evidence of that in the movie. It is difficult to care about any of it. If Six had just handed over the USB stick in the first 10 minutes, the world would have been a better place. The Grey Man almost occasionally succeeds in being a comedy. So the needless destruction would have been palatable. The performers continually maintain a cool demeanor while treating the violence as a little bothersome inconvenience. Gosling makes jokes out of the character's pre-made smarmy comebacks. And Evans plays a sadistic sociopath in a hilariously horrible way. However, throughout this rambling babble, there are numerous shots of little children shocked by the destruction all around them and horrible images of torture. The Russos alternated between creating a hilarious farce about optimistic super spies and a somber conspiracy drama about death and trauma, seemingly unable to determine which tone to adopt.